Well, greetings, Titans. Welcome to The Big Picture. I'm Dave. This is Dave Takes It On. Your EV handbook tells you that battery prefers to charge to 100% every single time. Yes, and I prefer to complete each and every journey without meeting any traffic at all. You see the point of this? Even seasoned EV veterans get confused about what state of charge you should charge to. Well, let's see if we can help you. Well, before we get started, I want to say a big thank you to everyone for your support in reaching 10,000 subscribers. And we'd particularly like to thank our Patreon members for such a lively response to our new chat feature. And this video is in response to Darren's comments on that chat forum. There are so many different opinions as to what state of charge you should charge to, so let's see if we can try and help you with some practical advice. And we need to start by looking briefly at what is a battery. Well, a battery is simply a container that's got chemicals inside it. When you put electricity in, electrons are moved from one bit to another. Think of it like blowing up a balloon. It builds up pressure inside. Now, when you connect a load, like an electric motor, to the battery, it allows that pressure to escape back out, turning the motor and the car moves. It's not 100% efficient. Virtually nothing in this world is. So each time you charge or discharge any battery, it loses a tiny bit of efficiency. This is exactly the same with a petrol or diesel engine. Over time, the piston rings wear down, the bearings get loose, the compression drops slightly. In both cases, ICE and EV, eventually the engine or the battery will reach a point where it is no longer useful or no longer reliable or no longer powerful enough to continue using it. The secret is to try and make that as long time away as you possibly can and hopefully time it so it never happens at all while you own the vehicle. Perfect world. Well, just like a petrol engine has a limited life expectancy, so batteries have a life expectancy. And in this case, the expectancy is not a number of miles, but it's a number of full and uh, full charging cycles. And a complete cycle is taking the battery from being totally flat to being totally full and then back to totally flat once again. In the EV world, we have at this time essentially two different types of batteries. We have NMC, this is nickel manganese cobalt, and these are still very popular for the larger cars and the long range and performance models. And we have LFP or lithium iron phosphate which are taking over where the power is not so critical, but price is a big issue. So they can be found in the budget or the smaller EVs. Oh, by the way, before you ask, why is the F in LFP? It stands for ferrous. So chemically, it is lithium ferrophosphate LFP. But we normally call ferrous iron. Uh, that's I-R-O-N, not I-O-N. Now, NMC typically have a life cycle of around two to 3,000 full charges, while LFP might get four or 6,000 full cycles. In both cases, the end of the useful life is not the end of the life of the battery. It is merely the point where the battery reaches a level of degradation where it might no longer be practical or desirable to continue using it in an EV, but it might be perfectly happy for another two, three, even 5,000 cycles as a long-term grid storage battery. Not recycling, this is repurposing, and old EV batteries are much in demand. Okay, let's take on your EV manual that tells you you have to charge 100% every single time you charge. It doesn't. It normally has phrases like, it prefers to charge to 100%, leave it plugged in all the time, it needs a regular charge to 100% to calibrate it, or uh, a load of other such variations. Well, I personally, as I said, prefer never to meet any traffic at all in every single journey, but I usually do. I have never yet found a single manual that states you absolutely must charge 100% every single time or you'll damage the battery. Now, if any of you out there know different, please send me a copy. I'd love to see it, but they don't exist. Well, LFP batteries can be charged to 100% every time and will suffer less degradation than an NMC battery if you do that. 
and it will not do a significant amount of harm to your battery if you only keep it for two years or three years and then change it but in the meantime charge to 100% every time but you do not have to and I personally choose never to charge to 100% I'm going to explain why shortly nothing to do with the battery so what do these cycle levels actually mean? Well, we're going to start with a typical battery size around 50 kilowatt hours. Oh, by the way, let me explain. Kilowatts are units of power. Kilowatt hours are units of storage. So you could have an EV that has a 50 kilowatt electric motor. That's the engine power. And it might have a battery pack of 50 kilowatt hours. That's like the fuel tank. Now, in that case, if you drove that EV flat out using the full 50 kilowatts of available power, it would drive for an hour and then the battery would be flat. If you drove at half power, 25 kilowatts consistently, you could drive for two hours and the battery is flat. Now an average EV can drive for around four miles of normal motoring for each kilowatt hour it has in its battery pack. So if you start with a full battery in an average EV, 50 kilowatt hours, it can travel around 200 miles before the battery is totally flat you'd then need to recharge it. But that 200 miles is important because the worst life expectancy of any battery, the NMC, can probably still complete 2,000 and more full cycles before they're no longer suitable as an EV battery. And 200 miles times 2,000 cycles is 400,000 miles. Just look at that figure because there are very few cars, petrol, diesel, hybrids, EV, hydrogen, anything you like, that will still be driving around with 400,000 miles on the clock. Most cars will have long since gone to that great recycling centre in the sky. Some won't. We do hear of one million mile vehicles, but they are exceedingly rare in the car world. The reason most vehicles go to the scrapyard is normally not anything to do with the battery or the engine, but the rest of the vehicle falling apart around it. Rust is probably the major car killer. With the average driver in the UK covering less than 10,000 miles a year, you would need to keep the car for 40 years, yes, 40 years with the same car, before the average battery got anywhere near reaching the end of its useful life. We just don't do that. So lesson number one, the average motorist will never keep a single car from new for as long as it takes for the engine or the battery to reach the end of its useful life. We just don't do that. And for those of you out there just gonna tell me, oh, my car blew up after three years, I guarantee you didn't buy it from new and drive it until it blew up. So why even worry about what level to charge it to? Well, put simply in pure chemical terms, it's kinder to the battery. That's it. Every full 100% charge and every full 100% discharge takes a tiny bit out of the life of the battery. But also if you fully charge it and hold it there, like I said earlier on about the balloon, a battery does not really like to be fully charged and under pressure for long periods of time not being used. That also takes an additional tiny bit more out of it. It's just stress. So why should I care? See, I only keep my car two or three years, some people say. Battery warranty's eight years, so surely I can fully charge it all the time. Yes, you can. And while you owned it, you'd probably have absolutely no problems. But all batteries, every single one, no matter what the chemistry, will degrade slightly faster if you fully charge it all the time. Remember the useful life I stated as two to three thousand for NMC and four to six thousand for LFP. If you always fully charge it and fully discharge every single time, hold it fully charged, you're much more likely to reach the end of its useful life at 2,000 cycles for NMC and 4,000 for LFP. Again, not your worry, you will long since have bought another car, but it would actually be much better for the battery, better for grid storage, which is where it's going to go, and better for the planet if it actually reached the full 3,000 or 6,000 cycle life expectancy. That's it. It really isn't your problem. Now, I'm going to give you an analogy. I do love my analogies. Imagine you've bought a Ferrari petrol car, obviously, and from the moment you get it, every single day and every single time you accelerate, uh, accelerate away from the traffic lights, you do so at absolute full speed, flat out, foot to the floor. While the engine will certainly last perfectly well in a few years while you have it, that engine will have a shorter life overall than if you had accelerated normally, 
most of the time and only flat out occasionally when the occasion demanded it, like when a Lamborghini pulls up alongside you. Tom is saying that you can happily charge every battery to 100% every single time and discharge down to 0% every single time and do no harm. Well, actually, no. See, a life cycle of a, even 2,000 cycles NMC or 4,000 is absolutely fine. It's not a problem to you. It's just not as good for the environment as 3,000 cycles or 6,000. Okay. Now, we know all of this because Tesla monitors all their EVs continuously. They've got by far the most data of anyone, and it's got masses of it. So a recent, a recent compilation of that data has concluded that there is, in reality, very little difference in degradation after 10 years between gentle AC charging to 70%, and supercharging to 100% every single time. But that's just 10 years, and these batteries could easily go on up to 40 years and beyond. Very few batteries ever get anywhere near the limit where it would be no longer of use as an EV. Tesla overall degradation after 10 years is stated as 10 or 15%. That includes the AC and DC charging, full charging, part charging the full mixture. Little difference. Putting that degradation into the real world, if you had a car with a range of 200 miles when it was new, after 10 years it would probably still have a range of 170 to 180 miles, no matter how you charged your vehicle. This is still perfectly usable, well within the warranty terms for degradation. So should I then always charge to 100% if it makes no real difference in the few years while I have the EV? No, absolutely not. And there are three perfectly sound and valid reasons why you shouldn't, and none of them has anything at all to do with your battery. Okay, first, all batteries have a charging curve. When they're empty, they charge at a much faster rate, very much faster than they achieve when they're nearly full. So I regular film this progress and process when I'm out on filming trips. It can easily take as long to charge from 0% to 80% as to charge from the 80% to 100%. Above 90%, the rate could be slow as 5 kilowatts. I regularly film chargers with charges at 5 kilowatts. Yeah, seriously slow. And while the first half hour of charging can easily add up to 200 mile of range in most cars, the next half hour, from 80% to 100%, is only likely to add about 30 or 40 miles more. I personally cannot think of a single reason why I should hang around any longer than absolutely necessary while my car charges. I've got much better things to do with my life and my time than just waste half an hour to get that 30 mile extra range that I don't really need. If you haven't got anything more important to do, then by all means hang around till it hits 100%. It's a free world. It's very, very rarely indeed that is needed. Very rarely do I ever need to charge right up to 100% when I'm out on the road to get to my destination. In fact, Make that never. I, I, I don't think I've ever done it. If I set off with a full battery, I can drive up to, to about 250 miles. I can then top up to 100%, take an hour or more, and that would mean oh, then I've driven 500 miles. And I, I don't think I've ever done that in a single day. Probably never have, and probably never will. I'm convinced that most people I meet at charges are simply on autopilot. They get there, they plug it in, unplug it when it's full. Not a thought in the world about why they're doing it. All the while moaning about how slow charging is and takes time. I only ever put in what I need, absolute bare minimum. Let me explain why. See, I do charge at home. Most of us do, actually. About 70% of EV owners do. I pay seven pence a kilowatt hour at home. So if I'm heading home, can't make it on what's left in the battery, my route planner will calculate for me the minimum I can add to get me home with an almost flat battery. Why would I fill up spending about an hour charging up to 100%, paying 40, 50, or perish the thought 79p per kilowatt hour when I can do that when I get home at maybe one tenth of the price? It beats me. I regularly do a five minute top up, just barely enough to get me home with less than 10 mile range left. Absolutely perfect.
Or second, while you might be really happy to linger around, got nothing else to do for a pointless extra half hour or so, waiting till it adds that extra 30 miles, I guarantee that the drivers queuing up to charge, waiting for a vacant charger bay, do not agree with you. We complain about queues, then we ourselves sit in a charger for maybe 30, 40 minutes, more than we need to. Have some consideration, have some thought. Unless you absolutely seriously need every single last mile by charging to the full 100%, leave the bay once you've got enough to complete your journey. All those waiting will be really grateful that you do. Or third, if you do charge to 100%, you no longer have any regen braking. Not at all. If you're used to one pedal driving, which most of us are, it scares the life out of you the first time you set off, 100% state of charge, take your foot off the accelerator, approaching a set of traffic lights, nothing happens. There is nowhere for the power of regen to go, so the car doesn't use it. Most cars just simply carry on freewheeling at full speed. Usually results in absolute panic, jab at the brakes with your foot, hitting the pedal far too hard because it simply ages since you actually last used your brake pedal forgotten how, to, how hard to press it. Most of us EV drivers never normally use the brake pedal at all, or very little. Even more scary, terrifying really, is if you're on cruise control or autopilot, at 100% state of charge in many EVs, it cannot slow you down, because many simply do not have the ability to slow you down using their mechanical brakes. Many EVs only can use regen to slow down, and they then apply the disc brakes if necessary to bring you to a final halt at the very end. So this is a simple message. Knock 30 minutes off every single public charging session that you have to wait for when you're out on the road. But by all means, charge to 100% overnight if you want to, if you're going to be using your car next day and don't leave it full. And that's done while you're sleeping, so no time wasted. And while you can charge 100% if you are there anyhow at the services, maybe having lunch, I would still always only ever put in what I needed and then move the car, freeing up the charger bay for someone who might be desperate to get a quick charge and be on their way. We want to say thanks to all our supporters over on Patreon. This is where we provide extras like behind the scenes content, bloopers and community meetups. We also have an active online chat for those who have questions, feedback or suggestions for the, panel, for the channel. For more details, please see the description down below. I'm Dave.